Um, welcome to the next session. Uh, Kevin will be speaking about implementing a harmonized shipping label generator. So who in this room knows what a harmonized shipping label is? Uh, Volker. <laughs> uh, <laughs> he, he's not in the room and I'm also not sure if he knows it. Yes, it's post-delivery related. <laughs> yeah, so um, the, let me just say a couple of things how this happened. So as you know, Sysmocom operates the, the web shop, um, which uh, ships uh, various things like SIM trays, SIM cards, and, and other bits and pieces, duplexes. And um, uh, of course, we are registered as a business customer with the German Postal Service, where we, uh, I don't know how many hundreds of shipments we do a year, probably something like 300, 500, or whatever. Um, and uh, suddenly, after 1st of January this year, they refused accepting our international shipments. Uh, so uh, we went there and said, no, 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 you cannot ship this way anymore. So uh, all, basically everything had changed uh, from 1st January 2019, and they did not uh, notify the business customers that there would be any kind of changes in shipping. So you couldn't, um, you couldn't uh, deliver the shipments anymore as usual. Um, uh, because uh, now there's new products, it's not a uh, registered letter anymore, but it's, uh, well, Warenpost International, and Warenpost is not Warenbrief, and is also not uh, Warensendung, and uh, Warenpost International distinguishes between whether you send inside the EU or outside the EU, and um, uh, there applies VAT in some situations and not in some others, and uh, you cannot combine it with uh, this option or with another option, and uh, anyway, it's, it's an entire uh, nightmare, but that, uh, having put that aside, also they very clearly stated that uh, you can... So the, the way how we generate the shipping labels so far is we basically use an API of the German Postal Services to upload uh, the address information and the the, the weight of the, whatever the, the type of product that we want, like we want a registered letter for four euros twenty, and then they return basically a QR code and the address label which we print on on a label printer and put it on the the the, the envelope that gets shipped. So the the actual PNG image of what is printed is generated by a German Post. Uh, we just print it on the label printer and we stick the label on the envelope, and. Um, uh, this API continued to work after January 1st, but German Post said, no, you cannot use that label that we generate. I was like, what? You know, you're generating that label and we are not permitted to use that label that you generate? No, but you now must uh, create a label that adheres to the harmonized shipping label specification of the uh, World uh, Post organization. And here is a, I don't know, 27, or oh, no, how many pages do you know? It's pretty light, yeah. Yeah, it's, it's like a, a 30 or whatever 20 page document that tells you exactly at which millimeter, at which position, which line has to be printed and so on. And you have to generate that label yourself. German Post does not generate that label. Um, and in addition to that, you also need to use a new API that is completely unrelated to the existing API um, to upload the customs information about each shipment where you state, like the, the information that you write on the CN22 label, uh, like, oh, this is, uh, I don't know, some electronics device for $20 and there is this and that and that. Um, that needs to be sent prior to shipping the shipment in electronic form according to this new API. But that's out of scope for the presentation today, and um, uh, Kevin will focus on the harmonized shipping label. The fun part, um, if I uh, may add that before we look at the actual shipping label, is we continue to ship without that shipping label, and it just works. Um, and I actually found out that in some developer manual for some whatever other API, they stated that um, yeah, they recommend to use this new harmonized shipping label to guarantee a smooth delivery of the letter, uh, particularly uh, with foreign postal services, and it might become mandatory from 1st of January next year. Um, so, um, actually right now you can continue to ship that way. Um, let's see if it actually changes 1st January next year, but uh, Kevin uh, thought he could do something to make us prepared for that uh, eventual uh, uh, new shipping label that everybody has to generate. So yeah, um, uh, I, 
this is a last submission because I didn't know if does it have to do with communication, but yes, it is mobile communication or post-based. It, it still works, so <laughs> still fits Osmocom. Um, and also, I like emails, so I, I hate emails, but I like having receiving my AliExpress gadget, so why not spend time on it? So the, the, the origin, um, Harald told uh, everything about it, and uh, I decided why not, because I love vector graphics, uh, and I love when everything is very well defined with the millimeter exactly, so I think I'm ready to become German. <laughs> and uh, I, I started to trying to find where really the specification is, I, I didn't really find something, but the German... Post, the Deutsche Post gives you a light faden, and it looks like uh, this is full screen, so it doesn't work. This is the document, and uh, it's 32 page exactly. And this is in, in German only, but it has, like he said, everything you need. This is how the shipping label looks like in the end. It's, it's an A6 format. And you have the from, you have the to, you have the barcode, which is also standardized, all this little information to see how to handle it. And this is where you put your stamp, and it, it even includes the CN22 for um, the CN22 part, with all the measurements. It says even uh, how how long it is. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it tells you which font to use and so on. So I decided, yeah, let, let's implement it because there is none available. This is what I did, and this is actually the result you are, you are looking at. This is how it looks like, and it is, uh, a, a, it is a web page which is self-contained, and uh, everything you write, so web. as you can see, whenever I change something, it changes, or every, everything I write here is immediately written here. I can also enable or disable the CN22, and everything is done in, uh, in SVG. The only thing which I did not include is here the stamp, because this is really specific to, to anyone. But else you can set everything, and then you can print, and on the second page you have your shipping label, which you can print in A6, and then it's done. Um, even, even the barcode generation works. Da -da -da so you can respect the EU format or international format for, for barcode generation. There are some couple of exceptions where actually you don't use the CN22 but could add another label or something else. I didn't include it here because it's exceptions. And, uh, but the, the rest is here, the rest can be used. And while implementing it, I, I, I kind of guessed why they don't give any tool, because they probably don't have any tool. <laughs> <laughs> and you, you see it from a couple of points. Whenever you, you, you look at the, at the things, uh, let's go on this page. For example, this is, so, yeah, this is for the CN22. If you look at it, they don't, the text which they say must be specific is not in the example. Then there are some boxes also which are not in the examples. And this is the example of the end format. Uh, no, not this one, well, anyone would work, but let's take this one because there are no measurements. And the, the text is not completely the same, and also if you open it in Inkscape, you can see that they just used something from a Spanish, uh, <laughs> <laughs> Spanish uh, <laughs> company and just uh, added what they want to it. And also if you measure the things, they're not, they, they, don't, they don't comply to the specification. So the proportions are not the same one, the text is not the same one. And actually if you try to implement it, and most specifically the uh, CN22 part, everything which they said you have to put on it with this font size, it doesn't fit. So, <laughs> so <laughs> and <laughs> I think because of this they, they don't have a tool yet. So. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so um, last month I had a cross-continental flight, so I implemented this in the in the cross-Atlantic flight. What works is really the the label itself. Um, so yeah, you can completely generate, except the barcode with stamp, which you could include later on. Uh, barcode works. It's a simple HTML page. It's pure JavaScript. No. No other thing. I'm not a web developer. As you can see, it is crude. It is pure HTML. There's no CSS. I don't know how to do CSS. I don't care. Um, generates SVC, so it's 
vector. You can do, you can scale how much you want. Uh, what doesn't work because I didn't have internet on the plane was that I couldn't have the libraries to generate a PDF out of it. So the idea is still, so you can use it on a web page which is standalone, you don't need any server, anything, because it's JavaScript, but it would be also nice to have some kind of API where you get the PDF out of it in the end and can implement it how you want it. So this is what is missing and which I'll probably implement in my next cross-continental flight, saving the SVG, that's easy. Uh, the API, because it's not server-based, I can only use get parameters, so you just put the URL. The problem is that there's a limitation of URL in most browsers, 1,024 characters. So if you exceed this, I don't know what happens. I'll test it. Saving the PDF, PDF converting uh, to SVG to PDF is a bit hard, so I will use jQuery and JSPDF. These were the two dependencies. I have almost no choice. I don't want to implement my PDF writer, but this will only be for the generation of the PDF. Everything else is SVG, so you can, if you don't want this, this thing, you can still make control P or save the SVG yourself and print it. And maybe include the stamp picture. You could probably click choose and upload your stamp picture so it's immediately included. The only thing which will not be there is the signature and the date because you have to, to sign the CN22 yourself. Everything is then filled with the same, same information. And yeah, that was a small talk and that, that's actually it. <laughs> Any questions about this shipping label? Uh, yeah, so uh, the barcode stuff, so did you implement it or did you just get some uh, JavaScript uh, library or something like that to do that? Or I implemented it myself. <laughs> uh, it's, <yeah. laughs> it's, it's JavaScript, it's pure JavaScript, I implemented it myself. It's, it's not too, too hard. The, the, what's funny is that the code which they use, the code how to try it, has a checksum, but also the number which you add has also a checksum. So there are two checksums in these things. <coughs> One on top of the um, other. So do you care about other operating systems for the PDF saving? Because on Linux you can just click print and then save as PDF usually. Yeah, that, that's what you can do here. Um, but the idea is that you use uh, some kind of API also. So if you want, for example, um, integrate it in Odo or whatever system, then you have a PDF which you can transport anywhere you want without having a browser. But the so other problem is you need to scale it to a correct size. And I think if you let the browser print it, um, the size will not always be very um, uh, precise. Uh, probably, yeah. So this is... The size which I put in the SVG are really millimeters, and this is really A6. So whoever respects the units and the coordinates I'm putting in has the right size. And I think probably this is A6. I, don't, I, I didn't measure it. But yeah, the idea is also when you have the PDF, you really have the A6 PDF and nothing, nothing else. No letter, no whatever with format you're using. This is why. And then, um, because it's a web page, you probably have to run it on the true node or something else, but it's, it's not too too hard of a restriction. Um, I was wondering uh, whether you would uh, want to put it on the license that would require the recipient of the package to receive the source code. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, if it's AGPL, the <laughs> how does it work? It's, there's still communication, so <laughs> yeah, that's a good question. <laughs> yeah, 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 you have to add some hidden pixels to discover if people use it and... Uh, yeah. yeah, no license on that. It's a small, just a no, two kilobyte file. Pro, for now, there is no, just a text file. There's no license. But there, it will be, I think, uh, I could already add it in one of the Git, Osmo, uh, Git repositories, whoever wants to play with it. But I still have to add the uh, export to PDF and so on. For now, it's only a file, and it's on no, no repository. Are the glyphs in the section also vector-based? Did you design them? You drew them with bio coordinates, or how they are they? all vector. Uh, so yes, the glyphs are all vector-based. I took them, so they also give a vector package. I had to correct them because not everything is right. But even if you look, so yeah, I, I want everything vector-based. <laughs> there is no nothing which is not vector-based. And the funny thing I've added here is the kilogram. You could also change the total weight. Is it here probably? Ah, here. The weight, if you change the weight here, it also changes the weight on the kilogram indication right here. And you can only do that with, with vector. So, yeah, every, everything which you see on here is vector. 
probably the last thing which won't be vector is the stamp itself because I'm not sure that any company gives vector formats for, for the stamps. Maybe, maybe not, I don't know. But else everything is vector based and you can copy paste. Okay, so when will you start working for German Postal IT? <laughs> <laughs> On the plane. Can you offer them some sort of API? Yeah, you can sell them the API. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I'm not sure how we are in terms of time. Um, we still have 15 minutes for okay, questions. So, so I could <laughs> say a bit more about the API madness if anyone was interested in that. But yeah, let's close the talk and then we can talk about the API madness. Yeah. So I'll switch off the Thanks. stream.